Justine has been by far the greatest supporter I've ever had in my life. She pumps up my tyres, she lifts me up. I wouldn't be able to function in an industry like I do without that kind of support behind mm. me. I don't, I don't think I have that, that innate self-confidence to just be out there on my own and do it on my own. Hello and welcome to Separate Bathrooms. My name's Cam Dado. And I'm Ali Dado. And we would like to acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, the traditional custodians of this land, and pay our respects to the elders, both past and present. We're excited, as always, to welcome into the bathroom a couple that are in the midst of a fascinating journey. Yeah, they've, they've lived abroad. They've also enjoyed great success in show business and managed to keep things together personally, raising kids, doing all the normal stuff that makes the world tick over. Now, you're going to be quite familiar with one of them. He managed to walk away with the mirror ball. That'll give you a clue on the most recent series of Dancing with the Stars. We're also going to hear from his beautiful wife, who has worked in marketing and communications, but is truly the backbone of their family. Yeah, she's the engine behind the man in the shiny suits. Let's welcome human nature's Phil Burton and wife and mother, Justine Smith. Welcome, team, to the bathroom. Thank you. Thank you, you guys. Thank you for having us. Phil, first, congratulations, Dancing with the Stars. I know. It's well not, done. It's, it's amazing. It was, what a shock. I didn't think that I was going to win. Then oh. When I first went into it, all I wanted to do was not be the first person eliminated. Oh, so, it's a touchy subject, Phil. Just, I'm just going to let that go through to the keeper. <laughs> oh, as, no. As I said, we I'm have letting a first it go through elimin- to the keeper. A first of- oh, okay. he's, not, he's still not um, over it. But we'll it's talk okay. about it in a minute. Because I just, you know, I wanted to ask you, has he made room for you in the family bed or has the mirror ball somehow found its way in there too? <laughs> Well, look, you know, between the puppy and the mirror ball, it is getting a little bit crowded <laughs> yeah. in the bed, but that's yeah. okay. You know, I'll give him two weeks. Is it is it Pride and Place somewhere, Phil? But- <laughs> I actually don't have it yet. I've seen it. Okay. And it's been sent off to be engraved. Nice. So apparently they're going to organise some kind of photo shoot when they hand it over. So nice. looking forward to that. That's and you've got, to get, you ch- you've got to change the lighting, don't you, now, so it actually reflects the mirror of course. Uh, onto the walls. I was and thinking everything. of twisting it upside down and hanging it yeah. from the ceiling of the lounge room. And that Love way, it. when you come home, you can just instantly have a party. Yep. Start well, your dance all over. Do it over the bed. Yes, yeah, oh, sparkling oh. over the bed. How great would I was that be walking bathroom. in there? Ba- I've done it in the dunny, yeah. Doing the <laughs> yeah, spark- yeah. The That's a great idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Sparkly bathroom. Dance around in the shower. How, so how was the experience for both of you? Because de- you're, you're involved as much as, I mean, you're not doing all the eight hours, nine hours rehearsal a day like I'm assuming you did yeah, or did you were legend. That. It yeah. did get the to that. The amount of I'll, I'll ask Justine. perhaps I should have done the <laughs> eight hours of dancing as well. Uh, how was it for me? It yeah. was really, it was probably different than I was expecting. Mm. I mean, you know, by virtue of what Phil does, I'm not a stranger to him being gone and assuming all of the, you know, solo parenting, doing all the bits and pieces. That doesn't faze me at all because, you know, we've been there and done that a lot with his job. But I guess I wasn't expecting the emotional side of it. Uh, which <laughs> was um, was surprising. Mm. I mean, like, I was genuinely excited for Phil because he has been offered some other bits and pieces and, you know, oh, I don't think that's for me. But this was the first one that he was like, I really want to do this. Yeah, I did. And knowing him like I do, he threw himself into it yeah. and I was really thrilled for him in it wasn't just his development as a dancer, but there was a lot of emotional development going on as well. Oh yeah, there really was. There, you really, there, really so a lot of upheaval, what, what I guess mean? the word you yeah. would say. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it was just I think, you know, I've been in a position where I've um been in the public eye for a long time, but I've always been there as part of a group of four guys. Wow. Yeah. And this was one of the first times that I really I did not have that to fall back on. It was yep. just about me. And so the nerves involved with that and the self-confidence, you know, that can I do this? Am I able to do this? After 33 years of performing with three other guys, mm-hmm. to then suddenly be thrust out and, okay, it's all about you now, it was scary. Right. It was really, really scary doing something that 
I'd never done before, ballroom dancing, which is a vastly different animal to pop dancing. Yeah. Um, so I thought I'd have a great advantage, but it turns out uh, the, the advantage I had was minimal. It was really, really scary. And along with that, that whole thing, it's a, a psychological change, I guess, because you, mm. you, you're developing and growing as a person mm. when you're doing the show. And the emotional upheaval that came with that, there was a lot of tears. And I think it's just in the back of your mind, you're constantly questioning yourself. And, and that comes out of you in all sorts of different ways. Mm. Phil's a really humble person. All of the guys are. They are incredibly humble. For when you, when in the you, band you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. When you list their achievements, I mean, it's just incredible really, what they've achieved. But they're also humble and Phil is incredibly humble and I, and I don't think that he um, was expecting the way that you felt either. No, no, it came as point, a shock. Yeah, mm. I think at one point towards the end I really rather uncharitably in the kitchen turned around and went, are you crying again? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, no sympathy. What are you crying about now? So, but- <laughs> so okay. So what, what was the... F- do you- Take us back to the first set of tears that were shed. What was that about in the process? It was overwhelming for you, I think. It was. I think at times it just became overwhelming. Mm. Um, You know, as we were saying before, the amount of rehearsal you're doing, you're doing, you're beginning off with doing two or three hours a day, just getting into the process. Mm. But by the end, it's all encompassing. It really is. It's six or seven hours of dancing a day. Mm. It's then going home and icing up the the sore Mm. knees and Mm. taking care of your body. But your brain never switches off. You're constantly thinking about the dance moves. Mm -hmm. Um, And and it is, it's it's sort of emotionally or mentally takes you away from the family. Because of that, you're just constantly thinking about these other things. So I think that's where all the emotion comes into it because it drags you into a different place. And... And think, the I overwhelm, the f- it does. It, it, it was overwhelming, but also I think the first thing that really kind of made you, you know, have that <laughs> emotional break was when you did the first dance and you did it and it went yes. so well. So I think there was a lot of relief in that. Right, as, yeah, you know, very much. Yeah. And probably not, you were kind of unaware of how I could tell he was really nervous. Mm. Oh, I was, yeah, there? I was freaking out. Yeah. To watch it? Yes, I was. <laughs> yeah, yeah Justine great. came to every episode filming, which was oh. magnificent. I was lucky enough to get tickets. I knew someone. Um, <laughs> yeah, he knew the dancer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what she's saying. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I'm, I'm allowed. He to got be the, it in the end. I'm allowed to be the dado here. Okay. <laughs> um, keeping up there, honey. Just keeping up. I was with you. <laughs> Play along with me. That, yeah. Look, I I did it. Too. Yes. My tears in the kitchen were. Uh, when I got home, it was I. I actually really cried because I tried so hard. I invested, oh, and we did the eight hours of training. We did. I tried so hard, and we were good, you know. Yeah. And and it was like I've worked my ass off for this, and it just didn't happen. And oh. I and it was the emotional. So I'm yeah. with you yeah. with that it emotional hurt. part it of it. Hurt. I was like, oh, and I was like, oh, and I remember just crying. <laughs> Just yeah. crying, going, this is not right. I'm a 56 year old man bawling my eyes out in the kitchen because I lost a dance competition. <laughs> no more sequins for me. Listen, I do want to go deep because I actually want to take us way, way, way back. Okay. To your first meeting, how did you two first meet? Aww. It's a meet cute. It really is. It is very cute story. Um, I was on holidays. I, I can give it go right back and um, I'll tell you all of the the details. What do you want to know? <laughs> I <laughs> I had a girlfriend who um, we broke up a couple of days before Christmas one year, and uh, we had actually booked a trip to Byron Bay together, just like a three or four day break. We booked a, a motel room up there that, to happen just after New Year. Anyway, we broke up, and I thought there's no way I couldn't get the deposit back, so I thought this, I'm going to continue on the holiday anyway. So one of my best mates, I called him up and said, "Hey, do you want to go to Byron Bay for a few days?" And yeah, he was happy too. So 2nd of January, we jumped in the Daihatsu charade and drove from Sydney to Byron Bay. <laughs> Into your single room that you'd ordered with your ex Well, we actually so. had twin and 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 top and tail with your mate. Right? It had two beds, thank goodness. It did have two beds. So we were, we were okay with that. Good. But we were up there for the four days. And after the four days, we thought, this is too nice. We, we can't go home now. So we went to the local camping store and went halves in a tent and- Bought, bought the tent and put it up at the uh, Byron Bay Arts Factory camping ground. 
the second night of camping, I, or the second day, I walked onto the beach and saw Justine with her friends on the beach. Because, meanwhile, <laughs> on the other side of the fence, um, I called off a wedding no. and had been, oh, I think I'd been single for about, coming up to about 18 months at that point. And it was exciting because, you know, well over it by then. Yeah. And um, so my friends and I, we were like, yeah, we're going to go to Byron Bay. So I literally, my friend and I literally got packed into the back of the um, VW Golf because there was so much luggage for the four of us because we were going for a week. You need a lot of luggage. And <laughs> I remember very distinctly because I had things all around me, just spending a lot of time looking out the window thinking how happy I was to be single. Mm. So second day we were <laughs> the there. The universe laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> <laughs> Second day we were there, it was really hot. And so we went, okay, we're going we're to have to. We'd been to the beach in the morning and had to go back to the beach in the afternoon. So, yes, I was there with three of my closest friends. and Yeah, I walked onto the beach and saw the four girls on the beach and, and particularly just looked at Justine and thought, oh, my God, she's gorgeous. I actually thought she might have been South American or something like that because back then she had quite dark hair. Although I think it was pretty close to black. And she, she had the tan going on and I she looked kind of much, she might be Brazilian. He was expecting, hello, baby, how are you? <laughs> and instead it was, hi, how are you? I'm from Belrose. Yeah, <laughs> but I. No worse, Narrabeen. Narrabeen, oh, she's from Narrabeen. <laughs> So Beautiful. I, Northern beaches. Northern I beaches. Set, yeah. Get it on. I yeah. set my towel up on the beach, like maybe 20 metres away, and just I didn't stalk, but yeah, I you thought did. it was kind of, I guess. <laughs> I just kept looking over just and sat thinking, and looked. I just okay. wasn't brave enough to approach her when she was there with three other women. Were you so already thought, in a band scary. and having success at yes, this point? Yeah, and all I was. That? And yeah. funnily enough, Justine pretended when I finally did pluck up the courage to go and say hello, she pretended she didn't know who I was. But apparently 45 minutes earlier when I walked past them, all four of them looked at me and went, oh, look, there's one of the guys from Human Nature. <laughs> so she knew exactly who and I so was and she I, played it. She, and were you, know, you in she Speedos quite, or were you in shorts? Oh, was he in Speedos? Oh, my God. I was in Speedos. Okay, so yeah, he was um, yes. the shy and retiring. Oh, and retiring. a sarong. I had a sarong oh, around me. Even better. I went full bar and bar. I like yeah. a sarong yes. on a fellow, actually. Like a well, he cool. was the shy and retiring type and he had black Speedos that had written in large fluorescent green letters across his bum the word spank. Spank. Oh. So, Wow. You know, so did he you, wasn't did trying you... to attract attention or anything okay. like that. So did you oblige? <laughs> no. Eventually. <laughs> yeah. Eventually, maybe no, a, a couple a of weeks later. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. That's a memory. You will never forget that outfit, Justine. No, I will you? not. No. I will not. But I was sort of looking at him and I was thinking, oh, he's so cute. Yeah. And uh, I caught him looking at me a couple of times. And look, I knew I was onto a good thing because I had no makeup wet hair and a swimming cosy. It was never going to get worse than that. Right, so, you right. know, I was on to a good thing. Uh, but he sort of disappeared and I was like, oh, because I was not brave enough to go and approach him. But um, he disappeared and then two of my friends said, we're going to go back to the room and start getting dinner ready because we had plans to go to the beach hotel or whatever it's called. The beach hotel. And um, anyway, I was... You know, my friend was chatting to me about this boy that she wasn't sure about, oh, all this sort of stuff. So I was sort of, yes, yes, yes. Anyway, he reappeared and my friend was elbowing me and he said, oh, I was I was watching you before and I, I was trying to think of something witty or intelligent oh, I could come over and say to approach. you. Great approach. Yeah. Mm. But I couldn't think of anything, so I thought I'd just come and say hi. He's and I was instantly charmed. Oh, he's, said, he's played I have no game. Game. Yeah. Yep. That, was, that was my game. Which is my so game charming. Right. It was. Yeah. It was. Yeah. I was instantly charmed. I was just lucky that two of the friends left because I thought the odds were better at two versus one than right. they were at four versus one. Mm. Otherwise, I may never have approached her at all. Yeah, yeah, right. So. Mm. And what was, once you got to know each other, what was the attraction for, for you, Justine? <sighs> Pretty much straight away because we did meet up that night and the poor thing, I mean, you know, trying to play down the, yes, you're in a successful band and all of that sort of stuff and they just released He Don't Love You not long before that. So at the Beach Hotel they play film clips. Oh, wow. On the mm. big white wall. So Phil was sitting facing me with the big white wall behind him and there he was dancing for his life, <laughs> you know, oh, full boy band <laughs> no. behind him. Not and I'm ballroom like, dancing, no. no. no this not not dancing. No, this was Uber like, boy band dancing. Yep. This oh, yep. yeah. Cut off T-shirt, tight pants, 
kind of thing. <laughs> and so I'm sort of glancing at the wall, glancing at him, and he turned around and looked and put his head in his hand and it was like, you know, <laughs> do you want to move? Like, what do you want to do? Just trying to make him comfortable. But I, I think we've been fairly lucky in that we were both just us immediately. Yeah. And mm. it's such a cliche to say when you know, you know. Mm. But we mm. did. I think we did. Is that we just same did. for you? Did you? Absolutely. It yeah. just felt comfortable straight away. Mm. Yeah. And it could, that whole thing you're saying that I played the no game game, mm. that was from, from then on, that's the way it's always been. I've never had to put on any kind of mask or anything like that. It's always just been us being ourselves and we fit together like um, mm. a couple of bits of Lego, you know. It just mm. um, we fit perfectly the the way that we naturally are. I said to one of my friends after we'd known each other for two days, <laughs> I think I'm going to marry this man <laughs> and you're going to be one of my bridesmaids. And she went, oh, whatever. But she was. Yeah. yeah. And how long did that take for that to happen? Uh, we got engaged two years, almost to the day, I think it was. In Byron Bay. In Byron Bay. We went back up for a holiday and I proposed on the beach in Byron Bay. At the most eastern point of Australia? Yes. Well, no, not quite. We not weren't quite on the there. beach, so we weren't quite up at the lighthouse, but pretty yeah, close. Yeah. Did you have your spank speedos I should have, again? shouldn't I? No. <laughs> I th- <laughs> we were going to dinner, so that kind of <laughs> would have been weird. <laughs> you, oh, so he just had his sarong on. <laughs> just, I, put, I covered dinner it with sarong. his sarong. His <laughs> sarong. Yeah. Yeah, it was so his good one. Yeah. My formal sarong. <laughs> <laughs> and then kids came. How long yes. did it take for, for chitlins? Four years. Were we mm-hmm. four oh. years after we were married? Yeah. So we married in we met in two thousand and one. Yeah. We got married in two thousand and four. Yep. And then our daughter Ash came along in two thousand and eight. And so where were the kids where were they born? Were they born in the States or no, Ash was born in North Sydney at the Mater Hospital. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, but then at the age of nine months, that was when we moved over to Las Vegas. So she was nine months wow. old. Yeah, we took a nine-month-old baby, to which Vegas. just still, Vegas. that's right, still blows my mind that Justine was on board with, with this because, yeah. you know, she had nine months of family support and friend support and literally walked away from every bit of it. Yeah, to go over to Las Vegas, and I know that that at times for her was really, really tricky and quite traumatic. But just yeah, forever grateful that she. And did was that. it meant? It was only meant to be for a year, though, right? That you initially it was a twelve-month contract. Yeah, and that's ended right. Ended up and being just seven and a half. Eleven and a half. Eleven and a half. Eleven and a half. We were there. So it's funny how things can, like that turn we, out, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Can we link, can we dive into Vegas a bit? And because sure. we lived in yeah, California sure. for twenty five years, I think we mm. met in Los Angeles. We did at a so, Good ALA. That's function. where it was. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Yep. So you're in. So can what? I tell you something? Because yeah. uh, we did meet you in the lift, and right now my inner teenager is having like a total meltdown <laughs> because oh my god, <laughs> that's the king and the queen. <laughs> 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 She's looking right past me. No, no, no. It is <laughs> Allison, the king and you the are the queen. Like, and the queen. You know, you must know that none of us watch Perfect Match. We didn't. We didn't care if um, Craig and Vanessa, who it both love raging, went to the Gold <laughs> Coast. Absolutely, we, we didn't care. We were like, yeah, whatever. But we just want to watch Cameron Dad over 100%. half an hour. Well, that's very and kind. You, I mean, come on now. We just <laughs> all just wanted to be you. So uh, <laughs> when we did meet you in the lift yeah. uh, at whatever hotel we were staying at for the Good ALA label, yeah. I, I literally went back to the hotel. Oh, my God, I did <laughs> such a oh, dork. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> and then in the lift. Yes, so my inner teenager, you can go oh, back to the so, Yeah, they say, they do say never meet your heroes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop. Especially in a lift. <laughs> <laughs> going or, up, or going down. Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, look, we went to Vegas. We we had our moments in Vegas. I couldn't wait to get out of Vegas whenever I was in Vegas. Mm, yeah. I think it's a- How did you guys do it? It's a pretty polarizing place, isn't it, mm. Vegas? Some people just, they, they really dive into the whole- you know, lose your inhibitions and have and be your wor- on your worst behaviour for yeah, a few right. days. Oh, there's some sociological studies that could be done. There. Oh, yeah. very much. <laughs> um, wow. We interestingly found out quite quickly that the strip in the middle of Vegas where the partying happens is very, very different to the outside parts. Mm. Okay. Um, there are some people that live there that literally never go to the strip. 
Right, because mm. there's, no su- there's mm. suburbia Las Vegas. People and think that, that that doesn't exist. It's no, it's two million people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Quite conservative. Re- really mm. conservative and mm. very suburban and quiet. Justine is fond of saying that, you know, we could see the casinos from our house across the, the side of the valley. Of course. But we were surrounded by Mormon chapter houses and Jewish temples. Wow. It was very, very conservative. No yeah. leaves on the ground, no blades of grass out of place, no graffiti. Nearly, you know, if you saw someone in the street after nine o'clock, was a bit kind of, oh, what are they doing? Yeah. It's a little bit, you know, those scenes out of Edward Scissorhands where they show the suburbia and the houses are the same and and the cars all leave at the same time. Yes. It was a bit like that. Was it a challenge ever in the relationship to move to a country like, you know, or a city like Las Vegas? Did that ever put any strain um, with the both of you? Yeah, I think it did at times. I think... um, there were times I knew that uh, that for Justine it was a it was a massive shock, yeah. And I could tell at times that she really That's was struggling to handle it. Yeah. Mm. Um, I but- didn't ever want to raise. I always had an idea in my head pre children mm. that I wanted my children to be raised in amongst the thick of their family and to have that Absolutely. extended family thing. Mm-hmm. And they didn't have that, so mm. that yeah. was a real. A really hard thing to get past. Mm. Yeah. Were you able to find your people? <sighs> we did eventually, find some. Eventually, eventually. Yes. Mm. Yeah. We, but we, I think probably we, and you guys would know this, you move overseas, it's going to make or break your relationship. Yeah. Mm. So mm. I think our relationship is forged in fire. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, Despite yeah. any bits of strain, I think it has made it stronger. Yeah. 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 We'd only been married eight months when we oh, gosh. moved over. And were you supposed to be there for a short time? Three, Cam promised me three years. 25, 25. years. 25. Yeah. <clears throat> and I was the same. I was like, I'm never having children in America. Mm. I have to have them in Australia. I want them at nippers. I want, you know, mm-hmm. like you're a narrow being girl. You would say, you know, family, all that. And then, yeah, you start putting the roots down and we got a dog. That was the first thing. Once we got the dog, we were like, oh, boy, we're here for a little bit longer, here for a little bit longer. <laughs> and then we did find community um, eventually, which which helped. But, yeah, I was – I was, and I, and you go, America to Australia, there's not much of a culture shock. I was – there. What there is a culture oh, shock, is. Oh, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Tell us, yeah, because you've mentioned Target, you know, you, so uh, and you, and we have similarities – and we speak English. Of course. And we've all, most of us are weaned on American TV. So American accents are not hard for Australians to do because it's already in our ear. There is a difference. You've moved, you say, did you, how long did you say you were there for? 11 and a half 11 years. 11 and a half years. It's still to move, to emigrate to Australia after that mm-hmm. amount of time. How was that for you coming home? Oh, look, we it thought was- we were going to be so fine. <laughs> We've been back at least once a year, every year. It's gonna, it's not going to be a problem. Our daughter psychologist said, it'll take you three years. And we were like, you know, we're, we're going to be fine. It has kicked our asses. I right. do not oh, mind it telling it really you. Has. There yeah. has been times when we're just like white knuckling it. But it does, now that we're coming up to three years, it does... And we have been so incredibly grateful to be back. Yeah, yeah. Never in that time would we did we question our decision to come back. Yeah, never. So that's one of the great things. Never. And sometimes it feels like you guys have we've we've assumed different positions. Like (laughs) this is you're the same. The reason I'm asking this question is because of everything you've just said. To make the transition home to Australia, or our kids moved to, as your kids did, mm-hmm. moved to Australia. Mm-hmm. Our kids moved to Australia. We moved back to right. Australia. Yes. So, did just tell me, tell us a bit more about that, the, because I'm sure our listeners going, "What are you talking about? How can it be so difficult? Or what is so difficult?" Uh, mm. I think because it's so familiar to you. What when you? I mean, you're from Australia. You're Australian, Ryan, yeah. and and we kind of felt like we had an advantage in that our kids bizarrely enough, really identified as Australian. Yeah, despite one of them too. being born. Oh, did they see yeah. that's really All interesting? Three. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think you think when you go back, it's just all gonna be same, same. 
But what you don't realise is that you've become a little bit reliant on being able to walk into Trader Joe's and buying your punnet of blueberries that's this enormous amount of blueberries and it costs you, I don't know, two cowrie shells and a carrot or something. It's like <laughs> nothing. You don't, you, you're not paying. So you've got all the little bits and pieces like sticker shock. I mean, I think it, it kind of epitomises it when we came, the very first night we came home, we'd been put into our quarantine accommodation. We right. were as jet lagged as anything, still feeling a bit kind of like what's going to happen because we were terrified the plane wasn't going to take off and all mm. this sort of stuff. We've got through all of that. We're sitting on the lounge. We're, we're jet lagged as anything. The news comes on and one of the lead stories was about a guy that had fought off a magpie attack. Yes. <laughs> and we just, we'd come from 24 hour a day, serious news, Trump, 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 Trump. Yeah. Violence, 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 yeah. violence, yeah. world news, on your doorstep, in your ears, can't escape from it. Mass shootings, To a guy yeah. putting mm. an ice cream container on his head and <laughs> fighting off that magpie, you bloody beauty. And, and we were just the like, news. that, that, was, the, the that news. was one of the lead stories. And we just looked at each other like, oh my God. We are. Okay, we're <laughs> home. We're, we're back. Yeah. We're back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, then we did our Woolies order and we got a Magnum and we were very happy to yeah. be back. Yeah, <laughs> but the Woolies order, the <laughs> Woolies order was probably... Magnum fish and chips. It's like, yeah, yeah. That's yep, right. Yep, but the Woolies that. order was probably five or six times the cost it would have been in America. So, again, that was like True. that, oh, okay, we are back. We mm. don't... There's never been a moment, I, well, I think I could speak for you, that we haven't regretted our move mm. to, to, yeah, uh, to here. Yeah, absolutely. It's just taken a long time it to does, settle. Because it's yeah, little it things like, I is. need to go to the doctor. Oh, okay. I've got to find a doctor. I've got to re-establish all of those things in my life that you just sort of take for granted are there. It's mm. it's those little things. And there has been subtle changes. There has been things that have moved on in Australia that, yeah. that are not the same than when you were here last time that are sort of like, oh, okay, I've got to readjust, I've got to readjust, I've mm. got to readjust. Mm -hmm. Things and, and you come back with a rosy view that doesn't necessarily match meet up. up. Yeah, and yeah. family-wise as well. You know, your family, they, they all love you very much, but for the last 11 years they had been – there'd been a novelty to see us. Yes. You know, and they would see the kids and they would take the kids for a day. But when you're back for good – all of a sudden they've got their own lives and <laughs> you were never really a permanent part of it for that 11 yeah. years. So to try and fit all that back in is really, really difficult. Mm. Couldn't have said it better. I couldn't mm. have said that better. Um, I had the same thing because I would come back a lot from LA, come back, work. I'd, I'd touch touch in with my brothers and my mm -hmm. sister and their kids and there I've got my nieces and nephews and I'm like, come back to, I come back to, uh, to LA, to home and like, oh, it's so good down there. And I had dad saying, just move back, you know, mm -hmm. come on back, come on back home. And then when we, and so I had this rose colored view of things as well. We always came back in summer when everyone's, mm -hmm. everyone's on holidays. On holidays. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's Kids, right. school holidays, everyone's just, it's easy breezy, you know. Well, first winter, it was everyone went into hibernation. Yeah, it's crickets. <laughs> we were like, well, we're, 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 we're here. here. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're here. Why isn't yes. anybody celebrating yes, us being exactly. back? Yeah. Why aren't you throwing us barbecues like you normally yeah. do when we come what, home? Why are my nieces and nephews not confiding in me? Are you know, you? They, yep. I mean, well, they didn't know me, you know. Yeah, yeah. all yeah. those yeah. things. That's exactly us. Yep. You know, my exactly. sister has two nephews and- when we first moved back, beautiful boys. They're gorgeous boys, Liam and Nathan. They're um, seventeen and fifteen. And when we first moved back, they were very standoffish and awkward with us. Mm. It was really, really difficult to establish that relationship. Mm. And it's probably only, even in that three-year thing, it's probably only in the last few months that suddenly they're comfortable and nice. we're comfortable. And they trust that you're cool. going to be around. That's right. Yeah, it's yeah. taken some time. And, and do you find that too with? In being in the entertainment industry, that now you've been back three years, they're trusting you're going to be around a bit, Phil. That's like right. Prior to that, they're going, no, he's just going to bugger off back to Vegas and and we'll, we'll never see him and he's three yeah. colonies again. <laughs> well, you yeah. Know, or for it's another 10 years. So why should we invest in him? Well, of is course. That, has that been a bit of your experience with work? Yeah, very much so. Mm. It has because- as you know, as you pointed out there with the other three guys, the other three guys still live in Las Vegas. Right. Yeah, right. So they're still doing a show as human nature, but as a trio over in Vegas. They sing, when they come they back sing to leave Australia. in Las Vegas, they do a Cheryl Crow <laughs> thing. <Where's Phil? laughs> uh, when they come back to Australia, I join in and it's back to the four of us. Yeah. But that doesn't happen that often. Yeah. So for me, I have, I'm having to branch out on my own mm. and it was really, really tough. It was like starting from scratch. Yeah. 
you know, people, it was still having that tag of we're going to get, it, I was, I'm not known. I wasn't known as Phil Burton. It was always, oh, Phil from human nature. Mm. Yeah. So to try and shake that off and develop my own identity has been really difficult. Yes. And Dancing with the Stars has helped so much with oh, that. That's good. So really good. has. So that's great news. It feels like yeah. a big step has been taken towards that to establish myself back in the industry. How do you build up your confidence and, and when, when you feel yourself like it's waning, you know? And how, how do you both work with that together? Because clearly it's a partnership. Very much. I think Justine has been by far the greatest supporter I've ever had in my life. Um, she just, she pumps up my you. tires. She lifts me up. She's, she, she, you know, massages the ego. She's, she's so. I wondered where so you were going then. Good at- <laughs> 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 she's so good at making me feel good about myself. Oh. It's really, really wonderful. It's and- not hard. I mean, come on. It's not hard to make him, you know. That's Though so if you stop good, it. good stuff to work with. So yeah, she's still yeah. doing it now. Yeah. She's, you yeah. know, <laughs> even now she can't stop with the compliments. It's beautiful. <laughs> but so that really does help. I mean, and, yeah. and I don't think that my particular type of personality that I have, I wouldn't be able to function in an industry like I do without that kind of support behind mm. me. Okay. I don't I don't think I have that, that innate self-confidence to just be out there on my own and do it on my own. Um. And there's also little tricks and stuff that you learn. I know from me personally, there's this amazing TED talk out there this lady did where she talked about faking it till you make it, Mm -hmm. fake it till you make it, Mm. and just all these little tricks of the trade that you can do with that. And those sort of things, they really affect me, and you just you learn those little tricks, and they work. And so it keeps you, even in the hardest times, it keeps you moving forward towards whatever goal. You might not even know what the goal is, yeah. but it keeps you just that little level of confidence and so the setbacks aren't too difficult mm. and it never makes you want to quit. Mm. So that's that's been a great help for me. So I know lovely. in the um, during the pandemic, I was really struggling for work at one point and mm. the money was just bleeding outwards. Um, a friend of ours offered me some work as like a labourer just working, doing waterproofing on some outdoor balconies. Yeah. And I took that work for about eight weeks. And the, the amount I learned about myself doing that work was incredible. Just mm. knowing that I can do this. I can do whatever it takes. I'm helping my family. I'm not earning much money doing this, but I'm, get, I'm out there and I'm working and I'm busy. I'm out in the sun. If this is as bad as it gets, then I can handle this. Mm. And that that taught me so much about myself that I could then take into the next step in the entertainment industry, which yeah. was which was great to know. Yeah, I'm really grateful to him actually for for sort of reaching out and offering yeah. me that role because it just kept my mind busy. It was great. It's fantastic. Action. For you, Justine, I mean, to be able to be that support for Phil that entire time comes from a place of knowing who you are and knowing yourself is that do you ever sort of wobble on the on the on the sort of course of confidence or are you just you seem very grounded like what makes you who you are oh that's a big question <laughs> um what makes me who I am? A mixture of caffeine and anxiety, <laughs> probably. <laughs> uh, You're one of no. those swans, are you, that like underneath them? <laughs> she's yeah, also think... rocking a leopard print dress. Oh, which is oh, pretty, and she's pretty, really well, rocking it too. It's Look my favourite. No, that's why I wore it today, to give me, to combat their anxiety. Um, I was blessed with a dad who had a really magnificent sense of humour. Right. Honestly, he, he, absolutely he just had the best sense of humour and I like to think that I've inherited the same sense of humour. Yeah, you so, have. You have. <laughs> Trust me, you have. I, I'm always looking for the the lighter side of mm. things and um, so so I use that a lot yeah. to support mm-hmm. Phil is that we look for the, the ridiculous in everything and, yeah. it, and that kind of helps to break... The panic if yeah. you're looking at the ridiculous. But also I don't know if it's necessarily um, a confidence in myself that it comes from, but I do 100% believe in him mm. because I've had a front seat since 2001 to watching Phil with the group, with himself, and it never ceases to amaze me 
that he is so talented and I want everybody else to be able to see that. That's why I'm always pushing him. Come on, yeah. go, go. And so it just, I don't know, I adore him and that's I want him to be able to do what he wants and that's what he loves and that's what he's good at. So that's why mm. I'm there behind him. Come on, come on, come on. Wow. Lucky you. Lucky Phil. Yes. <laughs> lucky Phil. I am incredible. I am lucky Phil. But yes. it's not a that conscious thing. I no, don't, yeah, yes. that's conscious you But are. it's something you it's also, just... you create your luck too. Absolutely. So, yeah, you know, if you go back to the very beginning there, you were on the beach and your Speedos <laughs> and your sarong and you you were the one who took the steps, <laughs> Yeah. you know, to that's go right. and introduce yourself. And, and so it all starts with an action, right? It does. Of what you're talking about going and working with your mate. Mm-hmm. I think it all starts. You've got to. You've got to take an action. You can't yeah. sit there and wait for Break stuff. Break through the anxiety and the yeah, all those crises of confidence, and just do it. Yeah. Fake it till you make it. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm and I'm sure. So good. I'm sure, Justine, that you get supported by Phil as oh, well. I'm absolutely. sure it's not a one-way street. I do. I, I try really hard to support Justine. I hope that I he do does, a good job yeah. doing it. We both. All jokes aside, we both cherish each other. Mm. Oh, we're a, we're a you great know, team. We do. We, we really cherish are. each mm. other. We we've had some pretty brutal things happen to us mm. in our life. We both lost our fathers to cancer. Um, mm-hmm. Phil's dad passed away. What was it? A month and a bit a month after, after we got our married. Wedding. Yeah, oh. mm-hmm. we weren't actually even sure he was going to make it to the wedding. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you know, Phil was young when you. Yeah. When I stop and think about it, he just turned thirty and he lost his dad. That's mm. ridiculous That's to lose lot. such a central figure in mm. your life. So that was fairly horrific. Mm-hmm. And then, um, you know, Justine's dad passed away while we were living in America. Yeah. So okay. Justine had to come home. For turned it about eight weeks or something like that. You were back. Yeah, I, think. I was home for two weeks before he passed away. But that. Was, oh, you got to see him before he passed. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I'm glad to yeah. hear that. That wasn't a fun flight to do with no. two babies and oh. a dying father at the other no. end. Mm. And an old mate, you're on stage performing every. Yeah, night, I had to keep go and keeping keep up going. your end. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. That's right. So that's a tricky thing too. Mm. Yep, it was. Yeah. And we've we've had other you know family tragedies and things that have happened. To us along the way, so it's not all sunshine and roses. But of throughout course. all, throughout everything, we just both step up when we need to, you mm. know. And and also, I've never ever felt anything but truly loved by him. Oh, stop oh, it! So <laughs> and clearly, trust trusting each other seems enormous as well. That Absolutely. You trust each other. So it's a massive yeah. part of it. It's actually yeah. one of the things at the moment I've been talking about with the Dancing with the Stars thing is that the amount of support and trust that Justine mm. gave me to do that. Mm. Because you know yourself, Cameron, from having done it, that you are pressed chest to chest with a stranger, mm-hmm. literally mm. get told, go into this room, press your bodies together for eight hours a day and no, no, everything's going to be fine. If you didn't have the support and trust of your partner when you were doing that, it would be so difficult. Mm. Didn't they actually ask you if you're married? How we? Yes, I got asked by the producer before I signed up. They said, "How's your marriage? How you know? How strong is your marriage?" And I said, "Really strong, actually. Everything's fine." Why? You know why? And they were like, "Well, because this show it can it can mess with marriages." It really can. And my partner, Ashley, in the show, she works on the UK version and they call it the Strictly Curse. So the show's called Strictly Come Dancing over there and they call it the Strictly Curse. Because the relationships break down. Of people breaking up with their partners to, with their life partner to, you know, get on board with their dance partner. with their dancer. I think that happens in in the American version a lot too. You often see that. I don't think it's ever happened in Australia really, but... It's, um, we well, there, there, there's certainly there's been accusations of it. And, yes, there and, have. And things. Um, so to, they didn't ask me that question. <laughs> <laughs> I, think they just, I think they just wanted me on. The, they just they had a gap cool. to fill and it needed to be filled. And <laughs> oh, mate, did the they, glue was. Did they know that we were just <laughs> like having a crap marriage? And they were like, who cares? I <laughs> <laughs> well, well, actually, I think the emphasis was, who cares? <laughs> 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 that's what it was. Oh, yeah. that's so sad. They went, they've uh, been together so long, they can break up. It'll be, be fine. fine. <laughs> They've broken up yeah. three times. Yeah, I'll okay. get it back together they'll again. Be right. Or they'll not. Be right. <laughs> Do we Shit. care? Not really. Just fill that hole quickly. Oh, wow. But yeah, for anyway. us, the trust factor is always there. Mm. And it was something that we never questioned. 
Yeah. It's like, Phil, of course you can go and do this show. And, of course, I know that nothing untoward is going to happen because our relationship is the way it is. It's never something we've ever had to even discuss, let alone question. Yeah. We just know that that sort of thing's never going to happen. It would be really exhausting. Oh, mate. To have Mm. a husband in the entertainment industry where they're out there performing. It would be exhausting to be worried Every time they stepped out the door, I can't. Oh God, I can't even imagine. And really, going who has putting the yourself time? through that. <laughs> so it's like a conscious decision. Yeah, got to trust him. And yeah. who, who has the time? Then you're in the entertainment <laughs> industry. Well, you industry. can't. Focus. You're constantly working. Yeah. Your you can't ass off. focus on what you got to do. The job at hand has yeah. got to be the job at hand. Yeah. So if you're focusing on other stuff, where you're worried about things that are, they're just. It's I, I call it the um, a power leak. And it's just like a power leak because I'm worried about things that are not yeah. in, in, mm. they're not relevant to actually what I'm doing. And yep. when I have those power leaks happening in what I'm doing, I, I, I have to shut them off. It's like, no, close it off and focus, focus on at the job doing. at hand mm. you know, yeah, and keep taking sure. steps there that way. Mm. Hey, uh, just, just one more question. Um, uh, just one more we could go for. Oh, no, we've got know. lots. I have we've a gotta... question too. Oh, so. do you? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Oh, no, there's more. Okay. Is, what, so... This you've dancing with the stars is done. Yes, and the boys are in Vegas doing their thing. What's what's on? What's coming up? It's the same question. Come on! Oh, wow. Oh, so you guys are just God. simpatico Which, right there. There you go. Psychically Here I am worried connected. that she's worried about me every time I leave the house. <laughs> um, and now we're on the we're, same. We're page. doing that. So what's next? Well, for, for me, both of you. for both of you, yeah. As for me team. personally, I'll start with me. Um, at the start of August, the other guys are actually coming back to Australia, and okay. we're touring for three weeks. Okay. Finishing off with the Monday Monday Bash in Broken Hill. How fun! Yeah, that's going to be fantastic. We just did the Birdsville Big Red Bash a few weeks ago, and that was incredible, like nothing I've ever experienced before in my life. Awesome. You're in the middle of the desert performing to 12,000 people. Oh, just all going off. It was just amazing. Were you in your suits and everything still? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh absolutely. Nice. But there, you take there's an element of Please just, tell me you're going to take your mirror ball with you. <laughs> oh, I think I should take the mirror ball. You have to, I? mate. But there's, there's almost to. like an element of lawlessness out there because right. it's – and I'm not saying people are behaving badly, but it just feels like you're on a massive camping trip. Mm. So even on stage, there's this um, – this, kind of, you know, that anything could happen and you're yeah. just relaxed and calm. How so wonderful. I can't wait for the Broken Hill one. Yeah. And then once that's finished, the guys are back in Vegas and I head out on the road on my own shows that I'm doing called Sweet Soul Music. So oh, have to come and see it. Yeah, oh, yeah. some solo so shows, great. mostly Sydney, Newcastle and Wollongong, and okay. that takes me through till uh, early next year. So Yeah. We uh, we wind and, things up. Uh, hang on. Oh. And Justine. And Jesus. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. What's That's next okay. for you? Uh, business as usual. Yep. Still in the business of um, trying to raise children. <laughs> trying, I love that. <laughs> trying to raise children with, yep. you know, not too many neuroses. I don't know how I'm doing on that, but, you know, <laughs> time will tell. Um, yeah, so just more of the same. Justine, actually, if I'm allowed to say so, she just turned 50 recently. Beautiful. Congratulations. Happy Welcome Thank to the club. Thank you. Thank you. I'm excited. Club. And she's got, a, um, she's got a little trip coming up soon um, to a health, a health retreat <gasps> yes. just for a week just by herself. Oh, and I'm, I'm a bit excited. Which yeah. country is this health retreat in? Australia. Okay. It's, it's on it? the Gold Coast. Uh, oh, Eden, right on. Eden Health Retreat. Okay. I, yeah, I think I've heard of it. Yeah. Okay. You, so, it's a, you won't know yourself. I know. I'm a, I'm a little bit delirious at the thought of it. It took me years to do it. I only did one last year for the first time in my entire life, go away by myself. And it I was the first day I was in culture shock myself going who am I without some person to look after yeah yeah it was a, it's a roller coaster it was a real roller coaster oh okay. I loved it I'm though. excited yeah oh good for you you deserve it oh thank you she does. She really <laughs> yes. does you really deserve it we have a shower at the end of our bathroom session it's okay. called a two minute shower okay we right. ask you to keep your answers short so we can conserve water right oh, okay right. that's fair enough <laughs> This is a question for each of you. What's your best quality? Hmm. You got, you can go first if you like. No, thanks. <laughs> In other words, please go first. Yeah, I'm thinking of an answer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what's my best quality is going first when Phil doesn't want to. No. Um, <laughs> my best quality, uh, I'm very loyal and I, I would have to say, Using humour, but not in a nasty way. Yeah. Oh, I love. They're the funniest people. 
I yes, don't know about yeah. that. Phil thinks I'm funny and my sisters think I'm funny. But yeah, but yeah. unnasty <laughs> humour is the funniest person. <laughs> it's the person. best. Yeah, that's it's right. It's the best. When everyone's laughing. That's yeah, you there. Yeah. 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 Just looking for the ridiculous. I'm always looking for the ridiculous in life because mm. that's the best bits. Okay. That is, that's a good um, quality. Me, my best quality, I would say I'm very generous with my time mm. with people. I do like to help people out with my friends and, and things like that. So mm-hmm. that's mm. probably one for me. Beautiful. Hence the, hence the guttering business. That's right. Yeah, well I can say mm. yes. <laughs> yep, yep. What yes. the world needs more of is kindness. Mm. I would say exactly the same thing, kindness. Yeah. What does your perfect day look like? Hmm. A little bit of golf. Yes. Yes, followed by a couple of beers in the clubhouse and maybe an afternoon swim at the beach with the kids. I like the afternoon swim with the kids, but I don't know about the golf. Um, <laughs> well, we can play golf together and you two can. Justine, yeah. I'm so with you. <laughs> M- a golf morning widow. mimosas. There you oh, go. Yeah. Well, morning mimosas, the two uh, of you. You know, like maybe starting off with some Pilates. Mm-hmm. Good. Mm-hmm. It's getting and, better. <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah, some Pilates and then having the luxury of time to do what you want, not necessarily mm-hmm. having to do anything. Mm-hmm. And then the afternoon swim at the beach. Okay. I love it. Is there one moment in time that you would like to revisit in your life? Apart from winning the Mirror Ball. <laughs> <laughs> That's still fresh, so I don't have to revisit it yet. That's fine. Um, our wedding? Mm, yeah. Our wedding, I would love to revisit that and um, and uh, not necessarily do it. I'd love to do it again at some point. It would be to, great to renew the vows, but just to experience it and maybe just to see how it all went with the benefit of hindsight, I think right. it would be lovely. Mm. Um, a moment in time that you could revisit. I I think knowing what you know now, I'd like to go back to the early days of each baby when mm. they're brand, brand new. Oh, that's you know? beautiful. That would be nice to be able to go back knowing what I know now yeah. <laughs> and having these because both of our babies were tiny, like five-pound tiny oh, little, little, little bundles of humanity. So, oh. you know. That would be nice. Last question. One word to describe each other. This is tricky. You've got to find the right word. <laughs> yeah. You there are use... so many wonderful words I could say about Justine, but just to pick that right one. Ooh. Dynamic for Phil. Ooh. Yeah. That's good. Mm. Um. You're not allowed to say bossy. <laughs> <laughs> Even if that's what comes to mind Strike. first. Strike I love it that how one. she's bossy saying, <laughs> don't Still call do me it. bossy. <laughs> <laughs> loving. I think just loving. It's then that in, in a, and, and I mean that in so many different ways. Yeah. You know, she loves me. She loves her kids. She loves our family. Um, she's just got so much love that she does give out to so many people all of the time. And so... It sounds like such a small word, but it means so much. Mm. Loving. Mm. Beautiful. That's nice. Aww. <laughs> what a great meeting it was all those years ago at Byron Bay when it you spotted was. her. Well Wouldn't done, Wouldn't change Phil. it for yeah. anything. We yeah. actually, uh, the, the friend that Phil was with, my friends knew really quite well. And oh, it was such a small world meeting. Yeah, yeah. And there was lots of people that they sort of knew. So we kind of feel like if we hadn't met at that point, then we would definitely have, right. our paths would have crossed. Yep. Yep. At some stage. Meant to be. Yeah. A yep. bunch of mutual friends and everything. It was amazing. <sighs> well, we wish you all the best and thank you thank so you. much for your time. It's so lovely to have thank you. Thank you for it's having us. It's been an us. absolute Such pleasure, a pleasure to be here. And the inner teenage is going, oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> the king and the queen. <laughs> <laughs> our kids all and love again, that one. Thank you for your wonderful, wonderful, wonderful book. If you haven't, if, if anyone's listening and you haven't read it, you have to. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thanks, Justine. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you, thank guys. Thank you. I met Phil and Justine in an elevator in Los Angeles, I don't know how long ago. Uh, It's one of those situations where you think you've met someone, but you're not sure. Gosh, it was good to see him again. Mm. Not that we had a conversation then. No. (laughs) But that was a a, a stunning chat. They're so lovely. So, I mean, as and when Justine was talking about how humble Phil is, I mean, for all that he's done, Mm. truly, what a humble and kind man and what a woman. What a support team. You know what I kept thinking about? Yes. Were you thinking about the, the, the racehorse and the donkey? 
No. Uh, so our, our <laughs> no, um, honey, I wasn't. <laughs> our daughter was talking about how apparently in a lot of relationships, one person is oh. the racehorse and one person is the donkey, and they often give a uh, a racehorse a donkey friend because that that's what keeps them calm and keeps them centered and, and and encourages them. And you know, and we were talking about who the donkey and the racehorse is in our relationship. No surprise, I'm the donkey. <laughs> Last name Bray. Um, oh, but la- isn't she? She what a beautiful donkey she is. <laughs> oh, I'm not sure she'll like that analogy. She knows what, but she would know what I would mean. Oh, of like, course the she support. would, and she would appreciate the humour of being That's a donkey. That's right, funny lady, <laughs> lovely lady, lovely bloke. Too. Lovely, and, lovely couple. And uh, thoroughly deserved the win in Dancing with the Stars. Yeah, yeah. Good on him. I hope it just is a platform to poof, skyrocket. Mm-hmm. Just thinking of Denya and how Grant Denya just has won. I think he's won two mirror balls now and he's just unstoppable. Well, you know? we're, we're lucky to have Phil back in the country, don't you think? Good because point. he will now be touring. Now we've got another great artist to, to go see. So. You can check out where he's touring in the show notes and check him out. Go go give support. Yep. And thanks for listening to Separate Bathrooms. We'll be back next week. Bye for now. 